May the 25th, 2021. Guys, we've been watching the CMEs or the eruptions coming from the sun for the last few days. And uh, this article was from this morning on space weather, but it says that, that the CMEs are coming. Later today, a series of CMEs is expected to hit Earth's magnetic field. They were launched in our direction on May 22nd and 23rd by the flaring sunspot AR2824. Although the CMEs are relatively minor, there are several of them and their combined impact. We talked about this in the last video. Got several waves coming in behind each other. Could spark geomagnetic storms as strong as the Category 2. High latitude sky watchers should be alert for auroras tonight, May 25th, and on the 26th. And uh, as the shields are getting battered right now, earlier this afternoon, at around 1700 hours UTC time, just like it was predicted, we started seeing incoming uh, plasma density waves then from these CMEs. Now also tonight, and this is a video I did at the beginning of May, and it talked about the sky events of May 2021. And it was in uh, the 2026, at the end of it, a to total lunar eclipse. It says, uh, on May 26th, the full moon will pass through the shadow of the Earth, producing a total lunar eclipse for 14 and one-half minutes. The disk of the moon will turn orange, the same color as the core of our planet's shadow. Now, guys, I've got this time uh, set to central daylight time. Notice in the bottom right here, CDT. And, uh, you, but you can convert that if it's 626 a.m. Central Daylight Time, it's 726 a.m. on the East Coast. Going to Mountain Time, it's 526. And over on the West Coast, you're going into 426. That's why the folks on the West Coast will see most of this, uh, blood moon, as some call it. But at around 40, 4.45 a.m. in the morning, Central Daylight Time. That's us here, guys, in the southeast, except for the east coast of Florida, and then up through the Carolinas and Georgia, New York, of course. The partial eclipse will begin at that time, mid-eclipse, right here. That's what they're talking about with the orange over the moon. Is a total eclipse uh, begins 6.26 a.m. Central Daylight Time. So here, guys, we'll, we'll be very lucky to see much of this but on the west coast anything uh, on the west of the continental divide or the rocky mountains because they're going to still be in the pre-dawn time think about it in other words new york will have already it will be sunrise you won't see much of the eclipse then central time here where we're at you won't see much but by the time everything's lining up the earth the sun and the moon the west coast will see it very well if you have clear skies and there's not a lot of moisture right now but even though that here in central time or cdt you may start seeing if you're up early the edges of the moon start to turn orange as it begins to do that and you'll see the sunrise but again central daylight time 6 26 a.m cdt uh to 7 11 a.m and let me change this timestamp for you guys on the West Coast. Now, same information, but notice the difference. We're now, instead of Central, we're at Pacific Daylight Time. So here at 2.45 a.m. tonight, guys, two hours and 45 minutes past midnight. And then, again, the most, the best viewable places will be anywhere west of the Rocky Mountains, right through there. But the mid-eclipse during the Umbra, 4.26 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time to 4.11 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. And then you're going to get a partial of this as everything's coming together and sun's rising at 5.52 a.m. By then, the sun's going to be coming in there, disaligning and blocking out that clear view. Now, that's not the only thing we're dealing with, but guys, check it out. If you want to back this up and pause on the timestamps, do it. But I think, if I'm not mistaken, you can check it out. It's going to be 2024 before we see another one of these events. So, guys, enjoy it, especially there. And let's go back a moment into the uh, sunspots on the sun and uh, the coronal mass ejections that have been hitting our planet since 11 a.m. Central Daylight Time today. But it says a strange ring-shaped sunspot. A new sunspot is emerging west 
of AR-2824. Guys, that's the one to the left. That's the one that's been throwing off these CMEs. And earlier this morning, I was watching this, and it was like a spark from a forest fire. And one of the arcing uh, uh, eruptions started lighting up this area. But anyway, it says a new sunspot is emerging west of AR-2824, and it's a little strange. A ring-shaped active region is inset in this magnetic map from NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory. And guys, earlier this morning, I uh, saw this thing come to life. It was almost like a spark in an arcing filament from the 2824 sunspot to here, and you started seeing it light up. It says not only is the sunspot shape unusual, but also its magnetic field. Usually the magnetic poles of the sunspots are aligned roughly east to west. AR2824 plus or minus or plus is a good example. That's the one on the left. Notice that, east to west, but this new sunspot is north and south. It says that the poles of the new sunspots are rotated 90 degrees from normal, almost perpendicular to the sun's equator. What does that mean? We're not sure. We're dealing with new science, and we're trying to pay very close attention to it. Now, it goes on to say that this new sunspot is worth monitoring uh, amateur astronomers with safely filtered telescopes. You know what to do. And we get a lot of their images in that we see uh, from filtered backyard telescopes, guys, and it works. A lot of times they will be using an, a welder's mask or part of a welder's mask as a shield. Guys, you may want to screenshot this if you're going to stay up and watch it or you're getting, uh, you're getting up very early. But you can see the U.S. here. If I scroll it up, you've got the uh, Russia. You've got Canada in here. You've got Alaska, Greenland through here. But anywhere which very bright, why here? The sun is already up. You're not going to see it. Now, if you go from, uh, say, St. John down to Washington, D.C., you're going to see not much and no partial or total eclipse can be seen you may catch some of that orange edge then if you go from dc down all the way to south of new orleans up through oklahoma city it's going to be a partial no total eclipse can be seen but you're going to see a partial one but when you get on through this area right there as the sun is rising and the moon is aligning with our planet this is where the total eclipse path is here and that takes you from Alaska up near Fairbanks through Calgary, Canada, down through Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, Dallas, Houston. Guys, as it's, the moon is setting tonight, you are in the best position to see this. So that means anywhere close to this area, the closer you are to this yellow line, you're going to catch more of that orange fade as we go through this, what they call a blood moon. Then you come out through from that point all the way over into Los Angeles. Now, again, this yellow line that's in right here is the Great Divide in this point because here it's going to be a little too late to see it, the alignment between the Earth and Sun and the Moon. And when you get past the yellow point, getting into the Phoenix and Colorado area all the way through um, California, Washington, Oregon, you're going to see partial events. And that's because you're a little late on the, you're not past the point of seeing it, you're a little early. And so that's what we're going to be seeing tonight, guys. And quickly, let's look at our solar wind speed and density because of the incoming coronal mass ejections. And here are the three factors that we look at most of all when we're dealing with the incoming uh, CME or solar flare or whatever, is the amount of density that's in that wall cloud here in the orange the speed in kilometers per second in purple, and the temperature. The temperature will rise every time the solar wind speed rises. It's like friction. Uh, but here we go. Right at this point, we started seeing this jump in the solar wind speed. And if you look at the bottom of this, right there, you're at 1,600 hours. Remember, the center of the window of opportunity from the CME trackers was 1,700 hours, so they were very close here. And it's continuing, it's going up and down, back and forth. But there's been an impact on the shields, and we're expecting another blow coming in tomorrow. Let's take a look at the timing on that. Now, let's look at the second wave. We're probably going to see this come in between morning and noon tomorrow on the 26th. And the sun is in the center, the earth is in the yellow dot. As it comes out right there, 
the 26th at 1200 hours. That's noon UTC time. So you go, um, you've got to go back about. Now, looking at the second model that has the second wave that we're looking at coming in tomorrow before noon. Let me uh, pause this as it comes through there. All right, you're at, uh, on the tomorrow at 2600 hours, excuse me, on the 26th at 1200 hours. That would be noon UTC time, and that's going to be about 7 a.m. in the morning, uh, Central Daylight Time, about 8 on the East Coast. But what we're seeing, an increase in volcanic activity, an increase in pressure on the tectonic plates, and uh, it's just like one hurricane coming behind the other. You've already weakened the defense, and you've stressed the shields out. But guys, as we go into the peak, of solar cycle 25 these things are going to be, become more aggressive larger more powerful but i want you to understand what shemesh is in the bible and it does not say son of god it is the actual sun in the sky and the healing wings that come from that and you've got to kind of say well that's kind of wild but guys with what we see going on and increase in uh, mobile technology and the different levels of that and the ability for that to block the natural frequency that we call the Schumann resonance. That is occurring now. But if something were to happen to the planet caused by the sun or Shemesh, that would knock out those electronics. And you, uh, once again, would get that healing wings of the sun. And God told us that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And there's many weapons being formed against us right now. But with the power that you're looking at on this graph, from the sun coming out through the entire solar system, is a million times more powerful than anything the dark side can do. And so when you shut down all of the blocking frequencies, the control frequencies, then that pure wave of thought, that pure wave of knowledge, that pure wave of healing will come through. And uh, I think that's what we're looking at, guys. It's building up into Solar Cycle 25, and there's nothing you can do when you when one side gets all their satellites taken out from a CME, their big grids, their control centers. It will stop. Just hang in there to the end, guys. We're watching it. You watch it. Be safe.